Hello, my name is Christine Williams, and I'm the Alumni Relations Director for Homecoming 2021. We're so happy you're tuning in with us today and would like to say a huge thank you to our panelists for taking time out of their day to do this event. All of the panelists here today are previous Homecoming Executive Committee members. We're so excited to have them here today, and we're so excited to learn more insight about their homecoming experience. With that being said, I would like to pass it over to my Alumni Engagement Captain for Homecoming 2021, Ashley Johnson. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Ashley. I am a junior uh, and I am the alumni relations engagement captain this year. So I get to do a couple of fun events like this. Um, and with that, uh, we can move on to our panelists as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashley Wong. Um, I was a 2018 competition captain and the, the 2019 competition director. Um, I graduated Penn State in 2019 as well, and I majored in um, biology, um, and I am currently at the Pennsylvania, uh, Penn State's College of Medicine, um, just finishing my third year of medical school. Um, hey everyone, um, so my name is Sarah Kurz. Um, I went to Penn State and graduated in 2014. Um, my homecoming experience, I started as a street team cap, uh, street team member on the PR committee um, in 2011, and then I was a PR captain and then was um, the executive member for public relations in 2013. Um, my major at Penn State was public relations, and I'm currently a PhD student at Pitt, which I know is controversial, um, <laughs> and I study higher education. And hi, everyone. My name is Marielle Rivali. I um, started my homecoming experience as an alumni relations captain in, oh, I don't even know what year. But then I was um, the public relations director um, for Penn State homecoming in 2017. Um, I graduated from Penn State in 2019 and now live in New York City. Um, so if you hear some beeping, apologies. I can't control Manhattan cars, but I'm really excited to be here, so. Yeah, well, thank you all for um, taking the time out of your day to do this and talk to other Penn State students and alumni. Um, so first, I have a couple of questions about what your life as a Penn State student. Um, and the first one is, why did you choose to attend Penn State? Honestly, I followed my sister, um, who's a year older than me. I like was attached to the hip with her, so was really sad when she left. So I followed her to Penn State, and best choice I ever made. I'm sorry, can we repeat the question? Yeah, um, why did you choose to attend Penn State? Oh. Um, well, I chose to attend Penn State because my parents actually moved, um, well, they got a vacation house in Pennsylvania, um, only about an hour from Penn State when I was in like eighth grade. Um, so we went up there all the time to kind of just like check out State College and it felt like I could see myself there um, when I was just in middle school and then it kind of just became like this pipe dream that I kept chasing and um, it was one of the best decisions ever. And similar to Ashley, I also followed my sister to Penn State. Um, she was the first one to take the big leap from going to a, from a small high school to a huge college. Um, but just from visiting her, I could tell that she had really found her home there and had an amazing experience. So I wanted to do the same. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so during your time here, uh, could you tell us a little bit about your academic career, your major, minor favorite class, um, and anything kind of in those classes that made an impact on your college career. So I was a biology major, um, vertebrate physiology um, specialty path, um, which was difficult, but very enjoyable. Um, my hardest and favorite class actually was biochemistry 401. Um, it was, it was great. And my least favorite class was probably organic chemistry with Dr. Maslach, if anyone knows him. Yeah, yeah, I think he's gone now, but um, that was something else. Um, 
some of my favorite memories is just like studying in the library, which is honestly a lot of my memories at Penn State, but um, I really enjoyed all my classes and um, my decision to major in biology. So I majored in public relations and did minors in English and communication arts and sciences. Um, my favorite class, I would say like all of my upper level like PR classes towards like senior year where they were much more like project based and I really got close with a lot of the, um, the people within my major doing that work. And those are people that I still talk to somewhat regularly and like touch base with and we've kind of like followed each other's careers, which is really awesome. Um, least favorite class, probably econ. I don't think I'm an econ girl. <laughs> and I was a business major. So I majored in marketing and had um, a minor in media studies. Um, ooh, favorite class, I have kind of two answers there. I was lucky enough to have a lot of my friends in like my um, more entry level classes and like my gen ed classes. So that was a lot of fun. Um, but classes kind of more pertaining to my concentrations. Um, I was, I had a women's studies class, which was like women in media and it just kind of opened up my world to a lot of things, um, which I think is kind of what college is for to expose you to things that you might not have thought about previously. Um, my least favorite class, um, probably mm -hmm. accounting, <laughs> um, because it was, I mean, it was one of my earlier classes and it was obviously before um, kind of education shifted gears to being online. And that was my first online class ever. And it was a doozy. So I give you guys a lot of kudos for being able to kind of operate from this whole um, virtual learning experience because it wasn't my forte. <laughs> um, so the next part is kind of a quick like this or that. Um, so if anybody, I don't know if we have to go in a specific order for that. Um, so the first one is living as a freshman, East Halls or anywhere else. Oh my God, East Halls. I loved East Halls. I would, I would move back to East Halls right now if I could. <laughs> Stone Hall, never in my heart. I was in South Halls before they became like Panhellenic, like sorority housing. And my dorm was like the oldest dorm on all of campus. And then they knocked it down the year after I moved out. So <laughs> wait, Sarah, didn't they have like weird, like, painting scenes yes, on the there walls was very strange weird paintings on all the walls and there was like these like creepy old pipes and the ceilings were really low oh yep. my gosh it was an experience <laughs> I remember visiting my sister and being like oh this is what college is oh okay, yep, okay. Yep. I guess I guess I can do it okay it was <laughs> such a random placement because all of my friends ended up in east so I would like constantly being like hiking up short ledge like sweating my butt off going to, to East to see all of my friends. I did something else. I lived in Pollock and I used to go between classes to take a nap and it was honestly great. Um, so the next is kind of similar, East or West side of campus? East. I agree. I was on, I was on the East side my entire, whether it was freshman, sophomore, junior, and then senior, even living off campus. I, I pretty much stayed close to the east side. I'd say it depends. East side for football games, but then like west side for like bars and stuff was a lot more convenient. Yeah, I lived in both. I mean, I lived on the east side for a while. And then my senior year, I lived in between college and Beaver, but on Atherton. So I guess I would consider that more west side. Um, and they have also knocked down that house too. So. Oh, you can't <laughs> just, win. <laughs> just literally bulldozing my memories, but it's fine. <laughs> so the next one is the best dining commons. Depends what meal. Mm, because good. South did like a late night. That was amazing. Um, Pollock did brunch, was, which was amazing as well. Actually, my first date with my fiance was at Pollock brunch. Um, Oh my but, god, I haven't seen you since you got engaged. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my god, you're so welcome. <laughs> um, I think, I feel like I ate in Pollock a lot my first year because it was like new then. So everyone was like, let's go to Pollock because they had just remodeled it. Um, but my dorm was actually connected through like this like outdoor hallway to South's dining hall. 
so we went there a lot and their late night was amazing and they did like a thanksgiving dinner like once a month at like one in the morning and it was chef's kiss perfect (laughs) i'm gonna have to go with pollock um i east was not what it was now when i was there so it's definitely upgraded since Redifer will always be in my heart. In a pickle will always be in my heart. Um, but Pollock was like kind of our, ooh, we're gonna we're gonna go out to dinner. We were going to Pollock. Like it's not going out to dinner. You're still going to the dining hall. But um, yeah, I would say I would say Pollock. Did you guys have the big O when you were there still? <gasps> in East? Yes, because their buffalo chicken pizza holds a very special place in my heart. <laughs> yes, the big O closed my year, and they did a whole they did a whole like farewell so I have I have a big O t-shirt in my in my closet right now I loved that place it was great so good okay so the next one is the whiteout or the stripe out game I don't think anything beats a whiteout for me at least I mean there's I've seen some pretty wild games in Beaver Stadium um I'm lucky to be able to still mooch off my parents because they have season tickets so I still go up pretty often and yeah nothing beats a whiteout I would say a whiteout too and my homecoming executive committee year our homecoming game was a whiteout and it was when we beat Michigan in like fourth overtime and it was probably the best Penn State football game of my entire life and it was homecoming so it was just like such an emotional night like everyone on like exec committee was like crying because it was like so crazy and that will be the reason I love whiteout games forever I'd also say whiteout I have like all the shirts from like years past and we spend a lot of money on those shirts but you had to get them and I still have like the white little pom-pom things from the whiteout games that are um, hanging on display in my apartment Um, If you envision one monument for Penn State, what would it be? I'm going to have to go with Old Main. I feel like I just had like kind of a lot of like pivotal things happen in front of Old Main or even from um, like I was in a sorority. So bid day on Old Main or um, taking graduation pictures on Old Main or taking my friends' graduation pictures on Old Main. Um, it's it's kind of weird to go, not weird, but it's like very sentimental to go back and see Old Main and you kind of just like remember all those things that happened there. So definitely Old Main for me. I'd have to say Beaver Stadium because it's the first thing you see when you get over like the horizon and it kind of makes that warm feeling in your heart like your family home yeah I would say probably the lion shrine um I took like pictures there every single year with all of my close friends took like our homecoming pictures there every time I go back we stop by so that's always something that like if I like envision a specific place like I envision that um and then what is your favorite creamery flavor death by chocolate chocolate chip cookie dough I think I'm gonna have to do whatever the mint chocolate chip one is that is it's just Mm, so good that is really good yeah that on the like the cookie sandwiches they make oh now I want one oh my god (laughs) um and then the homecoming football game or the homecoming parade another really tough one I think I'm gonna have to go with the parade um, I love the football game, um, but the parade for me, I mean, when I was, um, when I was a director, it, it was freezing that year. It was so cold. It was so cold, but we were on the float and going through the streets and it, I mean, we were shivering, but it was like one of my like top five moments of my life. It was amazing I mean I was sobbing once we passed the cafe and I saw my sister who was also an executive director at one point Uh, and um yeah it was just I love the parade yeah I would say like I had such a great homecoming game experience but the parade is just like a different level and I feel like it's such like a unique thing to be able to actually participate in it um 
and it was just an awesome day overall. And my parents and my sister and her family came into town. So like being able to see them and so many people I knew and just being a part of that whole experience was just, I don't know. It's like one of those Penn State memories that's forever my favorite. Yes, I still have my pass from the, the homecoming parade that you give to your family members and just like waving to them when you pass their tent was really awesome. But um, during the football game, like the like tailgating part, going to everyone's tailgate was really fun, like trying different food and like seeing people who have had their tailgates for like years and years and years was awesome. Okay, so that was our last um, question for the this or that. Um, so the next question I have is, where was your favorite place to study and hang out on campus and why? I studied at the same cubicle um, in the library across from the Harry Potter room. Not many people know of it, but across from it is like a photography um, center and it only has like 10 cubicle desks in it. Um, and I went to the same one every single morning. Um, and that was like mine. I should have like honestly engraved my name into it, but that was my favorite place to study. I would say um, either like up in the stacks, like that's where I would go if I was like, I've got a lot to get done. I need like complete solitude. Um, but I also studied a lot in the hub, like early mornings, um, would like go like before classes and get work done before it got like really busy over there. Um, and then my freshman year, my roommate and I, we had this like building that was like up past the library, like nobody was ever there. And they always had this one conference room that was unlocked. So we would just go in there on like Saturdays and like lay all of our stuff out and just like study as much as we could before like we would go out and do other things. <laughs> I would say if I didn't have like real work to get done, then second floor for Turno at the library. It was a great time. Um, my friends and I, we would just like go there and it was nice because a lot of a lot of our other friends studied there too. So it kind of turned into like a little social gathering, which wasn't the best to get work done. But then if I had to actually get work done, if you're in the hub and if you're in the homecoming office and go like past the Thon office, past where that little like gathering of um, um, like couches are there's just like a line of chairs in front of those conference rooms that overlook um overlook like that the stairs and whatnot uh, I would go there a lot and just I could kind of hide from people and get the work that I actually needed to get done done and cram a lot of cramming happened there a lot of cramming <laughs> Um, so my next question is, how has homecoming shaped your time or shaped your time at Penn State? I can go first. Um, I think that homecoming gave me something to like be a part of that was a lot bigger than just myself. Um, like, obviously, when, like, you're a Penn Stater, I feel like that's, that's kind of the feeling always anyway, that, like, you're a part of something that's so big, but homecoming really made Penn State feel a little bit smaller for me, um, and then gave me a chance to, like, engage in that feeling of, like, okay, I'm a part of something that's, like, so much bigger than myself, um, and it also gave me some of my best friends. Um, I still am like super close to a bunch of people that I was involved with with homecoming and like that is the goal like I've seen people end up like married because they were on homecoming together and there is nothing that makes me happier than that. I would definitely say kind of going off of that the people um, totally agree with Sarah um, some of my best friends came from homecoming um, and it it's an ex it's funny because I don't it's one of those things where I don't know if we would have really crossed paths if it wasn't for homecoming and now like I genuinely can't imagine my life without them because I talk to them every single day um and then outside of that just kind of development for myself I mean I wouldn't be the person if I wasn't that I am today if it wasn't for homecoming um and kind of being handed it, huge responsibility in terms of everyone knows what if you went to Penn State you know what Penn State homecoming is being handed a huge responsibility like that 
at, I mean, a pretty young age is really incredible. Um, and you're given a lot of opportunities to kind of flex your leadership abilities and um, flex your decision making, which um, is huge. So, I mean, I, like I said, I, I wouldn't be who I am today um, if it wasn't for health coverage. I'd have to agree. Honestly, being part of homecoming was very stressful at times. And I learned how to, you know, um, prioritize a lot of things. Um, and I like to say that being on homecoming exec um, really prepared me for medical school. Cause when I look back, I'm like homecoming exec, honestly, I was more stressed then about like all the timelines and things that I am in medical school. And I know that's crazy to say, um, but it really, um, shaped who I am today and like made me a harder worker um, and made me be able to prioritize and like really figure out what is worth the stress and what is not. Um, and it was, it, was, it was all worked out in the end. Um, and then what were your favorite memories as a Penn Stater? Uh, my entire four years. <laughs> It's like, it's so hard to pick specific memories because I think everything is like hold a special place in my heart, like for different reasons. Um, but obviously, I mean, football games are so fun. Um, and then just like going out and having fun with my friends and not having to worry about being an adult quite yet that I mean, obviously, that's fun. Um, but then like even the little things um, are kind of like the even the like little mundane things that are some of the things that I miss the most, like walking to class with my friends, going to Bagel Crust with my friends, um, waiting in line at the waffle shop with my parents when they come up for a weekend. Um, it's just kind of those little things that are just part of your normal everyday life that now that they're not, it, they're, it's weird that they're such fond memories, but you miss it. And I, I would do anything to go back and wait on that waffle shop line one more time which I will be in November when I come visit. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah, I kind of jumping off that, I feel like there's just so many little pieces of like what it means to be at Penn State for four years, right? And like just the the easy stuff of like saying like, oh, it's a Thursday night or a Tuesday night. Like, let's go get dinner with friends or let's do this, let's do that. Because the like regular response, I mean, we have a lot of responsibility still, but the regular responsibilities of like being an adult quite haven't set in yet. Um, so there's a lot more time to do those things. And I, I really enjoy that aspect of it. Like when I think back on Penn State, like I really do think of my friends um, and they're still my best friends today. Like I met my best friends in my life, like at Penn State. Um, and they're actually all coming in today from out of town so that we can watch the Iowa game together. Um, so I'm super excited, but yeah, those, those memories of just constantly being surrounded by those people that I love so much um, and kind of just like laughing and going through like day-to-day -day life with them is probably the thing that I miss the most. Yes, I 100% agree. Tadashi, ramen, honestly, like makes it up there. Um, besides obviously football games and things like that. But honestly, I even miss the dorms, like just like on a, like, I don't know why, but like fall, like the season of fall, just sitting in your bed, watching TV next to your roommate, who I also lived with for four years and she's my maid of honor. Um, she, there, I don't know, just like little small memories like that, um, fraternity parties, if we're keeping this PG, um, I'll just keep it at that. Um, but yeah, a lot of really great memories. Um, and what is one piece of advice to your past self um, and any current Penn State students? Have fun. I mean, I tell people that all the time. Um, in my current role um, in my adult life, I have the opportunity to speak to um, a lot of college students um, for like different events and whatnot. And I just remind them it's only four years. Um, I mean, we have a lot of responsibilities in college, which are huge, um, but really to soak it up while you're there, because it's a very short time that flies by. Um, and yeah, that, I mean, very simple, but it would just be have fun. Yeah. Mine kind of tags off of that. Like, like try everything, try anything. Like, 
it is the time to like explore and to meet new people and to like get involved with things that you didn't think you would be a part of or take a class that maybe is like outside of what you you know would have planned to take you know like I took a theater class my freshman year and it was so fun I had such a good time and I went to like musicals and all these different shows at Penn State is like part of like my class and if I wouldn't have taken that class I never would have done that stuff because I have friends that I talked to that were like oh I didn't even like know we had musicals on campus and like I love that I love doing those things like just taking the time to like explore and go to like new events and um, meet new people and just kind of like soak in everything that there is that's offered to you. I mean, you can't do everything, but you can certainly try a lot of different stuff at Penn State. Um, and it really opened my eyes to a lot of new things that I didn't have exposure to when I was like a high school student. Yeah, and going off of that, just like say yes to everything that you can. Like somebody wants to get dinner, just say yes. Like even though you may not want to get dressed or um, put clothes on, you know, just say yes and just you'll you won't regret it. And like, don't stress the little things. You're gonna get that job at the end of the day. You're gonna get the internship. You're gonna get into medical school or grad school or whatever. Um, and like little little things that you stress over, it's like not gonna really matter in the end. Um, so those are the questions I had uh, about being a Penn State student. So now we're kind of moving into um, life as a Penn State alum. So the first question for that I have are, um, is what actions have you taken to show that you, you are Penn State proud to others since you have graduated and moved into the professional world? Oh, I'm always talking about Penn State to like my co like I work at Pitt now and I talk about Penn State all the time. I'm like, oh, Penn State was the best ever. We did this at Penn State. Um, people probably think it's annoying. I have like a banner up in my office. Um, I'm always telling people about how much I love Penn State. Um, and now that like my nieces and nephews are like getting older too, I'm constantly telling them like, oh, I'll take you on a tour to Penn State. Like I'll show you around. It's a great place to be. So just like trying to like, always like talk about the good things and like encourage future people to go there. Um, I'm just like really proud of Penn State and I'm like very proud that like I went there and I had such a good experience and I always just wanna like share that with other people. And I will definitely say the public relations director mindset never goes away because I'm the same way. Um, I, everyone I work with knows I went to Penn State because I won't shut up about it. Um, but I am very fortunate that a lot of my college friends also live in New York with me now. So, um, two of my best friends, we, we live together. Um, and so every game day we're going across the street to brother Jimmy's, um, which is Penn state bar here. And we, it's great because you see a lot of people that from kind of your past life. Um, so I still try to stay very connected to my Penn State roots um, and go up to football games and talk about it a lot and um, just engage with current students as well as other alumni that even if our paths didn't cross um, during my four years, there's we still have so many shared experiences that there's a lot to talk about. If you would believe, I drive a Chevy Silverado pickup truck and in the back has like all these Penn State stickers and nobody believes that I drive that truck. And so when I get out of it, it's really funny. Um, but I also went to, I'm at Penn State Medical School. So obviously I'm always like, I went to Penn State undergrad, like this is my home. Um, I will, I think I might be end up with Penn State like forever and ever and ever. Um, but like you both said, just telling everyone like that you went to Penn State and what a great experience you had. And when I was on my pediatrics rotation and like all the kids that are like getting ready to go to college, I'm like, oh, did you think of Penn State? Like Penn State was awesome. I'm trying to convince them to go as well. Um, and how has home, have, how has being part of homecoming impacted you after you graduated? Um, I think working with alumni has been really awesome. Like through Penn State, like homecoming, like connecting the whole network of all these Penn Staters across the country and across the world. Um, that's something that I really wanted to do here at the College of Medicine. So I am um, on the board for alumni here as well. Um, and that homecoming kind of shaped that um, realization that 
you know, Penn State is not just in-state college. It's really like everywhere, anywhere you want it to be. Yeah, I'll say that Penn State homing, homecoming kind of led me to my career path today. So I, when I was involved with homecoming, I think it gave me the opportunity to like see how a university actually works and all the different things that are kind of going on behind the scenes. Um, and that was really, really interesting to me. And our advisor for homecoming at the time was um, Jen Grossman Leopard. And she worked in student affairs. And I was like, I think I want to like do something like this. So I ended up interning for her and then went out into the world and did my PR job for two years. And I just kept thinking about that experience. And then I ended up going back to grad school for higher ed. Um, and here I am like five years later in a PhD program for it. And like still kind of like chasing that dream and seeing myself being a part of like a university culture um, in one way or another in the future and, and homecoming kind of led me to that. Yeah, and I, I think it's kind of that real world experience that homecoming offers you that really helps you realize what you wanna do moving forward. Um, so in a similar situation, um, one of obviously being part of homecoming, you, you're exposed to a lot of like leadership development and things like that. And um, kind of in my own life, when I'm looking at what I want to do moving forward, that's one of the things that I really love, really love. And during my time at homecoming, loved connecting to so many different students and things like that. So kind of as I take next steps um, in my own career path, I've been looking a lot, looking back a lot on my experience in homecoming and really realizing how I want to make an impact in this world um, in my own capacities moving forward. Um, and where is the craziest or most unexpected place that you have met a Penn State alum? I don't know if it's like super wild, but I mean, New York is huge. There's 8 million people on the island of Manhattan. And I was walking down the street like two weeks ago in just a Penn State sweatshirt on a Sunday morning looking pretty crusty. Um, and there were a group of guys walking by and they screamed, we are at me. So, I mean, even though I'm four and a half hours away from Penn State, um, walking through Manhattan, which is huge, you still have those connections to um, have that connection to Penn State. Yeah, so for me, I will say um, one of the coolest things that came out of the relationships I had with Homecoming is one of my really good friends, Bavia. Um, she's from India and she got married in India and a bunch of us from our exec committee all went to her wedding and then like travel around India afterwards um, and it was awesome and the craziest part was we went to her wedding in India and I was like meeting new people from Penn State that I hadn't met at Penn State that went there but in India <laughs> so like still connecting with like alums from Penn State that I didn't even know during my time but like halfway across the world at like a mutual friend's wedding um, and that's just like that's the strength of like a Penn State bond. That's really awesome. <laughs> that wedding must have been like amazing. Um, but yeah, anywhere I travel, like I was in Greece um, two summers ago and saw a bunch of people at Penn State. Like honestly, wherever you go, you're going to find somebody from Penn State. There's 26 people in my class that actually went to Penn State and I never met a single one of them. So Penn State is huge um, and you're going to meet them wherever you go. Um, are there any things that are drastically different now on campus <clears throat> than they were when you were a student? Like any renovations, traditions, things like that? Well, the fact that like two of the three places I live no longer exist, <laughs> that's pretty different. Um, I went, last time I was back at Penn State was like two plus years ago now, like pre-COVID. Um, and oh my gosh, even when I went then walking downtown, I was like, y'all got an H&M and a Target? Like when I went here, we had nothing. We had like one store and there was like nowhere you could get to if you didn't have a car, you wanted to like sit on the bus for 30 minutes. So um, yeah, that's that's the biggest change is like for me is the off-campus stuff, like all the high rises going in and like there were no good apartments when I was there, there was nothing nice. <laughs> but like, it all was like, it didn't matter because everything else was so great that it was like, yeah, sure, we'll sleep three girls in a one bedroom apartment, like that works. Um, now I would be like, never. But at the time it was like such an exciting adventure. So seeing how much things have changed, how like sparkly new some stuff is, is so crazy to me. 
Yeah, I mean, and I didn't even graduate that long ago. I mean, Ash and I both graduated in 2019. It was like, what, yesterday? Um, but everything changes so quickly. And I mean, I haven't been back since before the pandemic. So it has been um, a little bit. But I mean, the thing that sticks out to me the most is the parking lot behind the waffle shop. And also, the, I heard the deli's not there anymore. Wild. Um, but the parking lot behind the waffle shop that, I mean, it's not a parking lot anymore. It's it's a high rise, which is crazy. I mean, I can't wait to see it. Um, and also like the tavern has a rooftop now, which is like so cool. And it's cool to see even in a short amount of time how things change and evolve. Um, and it's, I'm very excited to go back in a month um, to kind of see it all for myself. But um, it's nice because even though things are changing, those memories that you make, kind of don't so I'm sorry to tell you guys the H&M closed it was there for like a couple years and then now it's like closed so oh. very very tragic but yeah sorry. that uh, I was just <laughs> at this past weekend and that that high rise be like next to P-Man's yeah in Chipo- it's huge I was oh like this doesn't even look like anyways and then, but then you can't but then you can't tell how long the p-man line is yeah. long, far <laughs> away like oh okay I, I have digress. technology for that now though like yeah, I'm like aging that. myself because p-man wasn't even there and I was like I don't even know what that means I'm like what is Pimanty that brothers it's from Pittsburgh <laughs> oh well I know Primanti brothers because I live in Pittsburgh yeah. but like I don't know the lingo clearly and that didn't even exist when I was there. So when I was there, it was G-Man and it was like where everybody like went out on like um, like Thursdays. It's like where all like the frat and sorority people would go. Uh, it's still where all the frat and sorority people go. <laughs> it's just called a different name now. Um, yeah. And then there's like doggies that's now there. Yeah. And that used to be what? Skeller or something? Yeah. Old yeah. Skeller. And now it's now it's like an outdoor um like a whole outdoor thing it's very cool highly suggest going um and what is your favorite experience about being a penn state alum um so any like speaking engagements you guys might have had coming back to campus things like that well for homecoming my like first like alum experience was like coming back and seeing the homecoming like after us like go through the parade and everything we sat at cafe on the porch and watched it and then um I guess it was the year before COVID we had like our five years since we were like involved with homecoming and we like a bunch of us came back and got like an Airbnb and like went and did the whole like parade thing and cheered everybody on and just like being able to come back and be like a part of it, even though like you don't necessarily like know anyone involved at this point anymore. Um, that's always just like a really great feeling. Yeah, totally agree. Um, like I, I mentioned before, my sister was also a director um, prior to me. I really just followed her footsteps for everything. She did. She went to Penn State. I went to Penn State. She did homecoming. I did homecoming. Um, but it's really cool for, to go back and have that experience of homecoming with her, um, because she has all of her friends who were on exec with her that I know really well now. And then all of my friends that she knows really well now. So even though, um, we were never in college at the same time together, um, it's very cool to have that experience together, um, when it comes to homecoming. Um, in terms of like professional things that I've been involved with that I've really enjoyed, um, I've had the opportunity to go to some in-person career fairs and some speaking engagements and classes um, through my job. So I really love that. Um, one, I love the business building. I spent four years there, so it's always nice to go back. But I love talking to students about really how Penn State shaped me um, in my adult life now um because I was it wasn't too long ago that I was sitting um where they are where they yeah where they are now so um that's always a fun and very personally fulfilling moment when I can go back to um campus and and speak to students Yeah, I agree. Being able to speak to students who were also where we were um, a couple of years ago is really rewarding. Um, especially, I speak to um, kids or 
I guess, students in the College of Science um, about whether they want to pursue medicine or not, um, and all the things that Penn State offered me and has to offer its students in order to, you know, help them get to wherever they want to go um, is really, really awesome. And then the last question I have for you guys uh, is, tell us a little bit about what it's like to be part of the largest network of alumni. I actually just Googled this like the other day. I was like, oh, how many living alumni are there? And Google said 700,000, which is kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think it's just like being a part of something, like I said earlier, that's bigger than yourself. Um, and that like, no matter where you go, there's always gonna be like another Penn State person. Um, and like having that connection is like such a strong thing, like whether it's like networking for like your job or you're moving to a new city and you want to try to meet new friends. Um, there's like always a way to like find a Penn Stater that's like willing to welcome you. Um, and I think that's the best part about being an alum. Yeah, absolutely. And for me, it's all about kind of having that shared experience. Um, I don't miss a game ever, um, whether it's in person or watching it um, like on TV somewhere. So to be able to go anywhere, and I've watched games in Chicago, I've been in Boston and watched Penn State games in, here in New York, back at home. Um, I'm from New Jersey. But um, so to be able to be anywhere in the country, screaming your head off um, in like, fourth down, fourth quarter with a room full of people that you don't know um, is pretty crazy. And it just, it's amazing how much Penn State pride there is, um, no matter what year you graduated, no matter um, what campus you were at. So it's, it's definitely Penn State proud and Penn State strong wherever you are. I agree. I think it provides like a next level of comfort that would not be there if I wasn't a Penn State alum. Um, just knowing that wherever I will go, if I'm ever feeling uneasy, there's always, you know, someone or something I can turn to that um, Penn State has given us. Um, and then also just being a part of the family, like you always feel very welcomed whenever you come back or when you meet a new person. Um, and then like my whole life, I think is Penn State, like my fiance went to Penn State, we met there. Thank you, Penn State. That was amazing. Um, my sister and all of my friends went to Penn State as well. Um, so it's just like this special feeling of like warmness in your heart, knowing that you went to Penn State and you, you know, you always have somewhere or something. Yeah, well, Thank you all for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, and it's it's been great to hear your stories and realize that even though um, some things might be a little bit different, the Penn State experience really is staying the same. Um, so if you guys have any questions for me, I can answer those now. Uh, but other than that, I think this kind of wraps up this alumni talk. No, I, I don't really have any questions. I just wanna thank you guys for putting this together. Um, I know it's a crazy stressful time. You guys are coming down to the wire a little bit, um, but your work is so important um, as alumni. Us coming back for homecoming is, it's one of the highlights of my year. Um, and I know it's not just a singular experience. It's an experience that everyone shares. My parents who didn't even go to Penn State, homecoming is like their favorite time of year too. So um, I wanna thank you guys for all your hard work leading up to this point. Um, with homecoming and for putting this together as well. Yeah, I'll echo that too. I don't have any questions, but um, giving folks like an opportunity to like reflect on their experience and like reflect on their time at homecoming. Like that's just like, when you all email me, I was like, that, this is great. I needed this. I was like, I wanna sit down and like talk to other people about Penn State because it is like, it's something that I miss so much. And it was like such a big part of like my early like adulthood life. Um, that like, as I'm like getting older, I like think back about, uh, like think back about it a lot and like very fondly. Um, and it's so true. Like it's such a family and it's like great to like hear from other people and their stories and um, just soak it all up for homecoming because you're going to have a great time. It's stressful. It's a lot of work, but it's really special. So I hope you guys have a great experience. Yeah. Thanks so much for organizing this and like 
you're going to do great. Congratulations on getting this far. I know it's like been such a long year. I remember like October when homecoming was about to, oh, I thought I was going to just break down, but honestly, you've done like all the hard work already. It's like behind you, just like enjoy it. Well, I, I don't have any other comments. Again, thank you guys. Um, I don't know if Christine has anything to kind of exit it out with. Yeah, I'll come on. Um, just a huge thank you to all three of you for coming and participating today. It really means a lot for me um, and to Ashley as well. Um, just to echo you all, it's been a lot. It's been a lot of work being a director coming into this position and you just get like slammed with work, especially this month and last month, but we're on the home stretch. So it's super exciting. And again, just thank you all for coming. It's been really great to hear your stories and experiences, especially the bar experiences. <laughs> it's always so fun to hear. Um, but yeah, just thank you so much. It's been great. I literally have a dirty Sprite neon sign hanging in my, um, hanging in my apartment right now. Um, so yeah, it doesn't leave you. It doesn't leave you, but if you guys ever need anything, just reach out to us. We we're happy to even just give you guys some words of encouragement during homecoming week when the, when it, when it's stressful. <laughs> Stuff hits the fan. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's already starting. Okay. <laughs> Well, enjoy your Saturday. And yeah, thank God. you so enjoy much. Enjoy Saturday. watching the game. Yeah, yes. let's beat Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> so much, Bye. guys.